And we're back! In this game, Elliot's playing Rocco. This is a deck that leans really heavily on birthing pot lines and usually finishes it off with a Kiki Jiki combo. Jim's playing Jessica Ishai. This is a deck known as Jeskai Delver because it's very similar to tempo decks you'll see in other formats. It basically wants to get out Ishai as fast as possible, then uses Jessica to clear threats off the board while Ishai grows and grows and grows. Tori is playing Kark Sakashima. This is a Spellslinger deck that relies on casting Kark, copying it with Sakashima, and using the triggers to return spells to their hand while still getting their effect. Lua is playing Winota. You've seen this deck on the channel before, and it's an all-out aggro deck. Look for Lua to be putting out lots of damage. Let's get into it. On turn one, Elliot draws a card and plays a Flooded Strand, cracking it, going to 39, and grabbing a Savannah. He cast Green Sun Zenith, X equals zero. He grabs a Dryad Arbor, putting it into play, and shuffles Green Sun Zenith back into his library. He passes the turn. Jim draws a card, casts a Lotus Petal, then cracks the Lotus Petal to cast a Soul Ring. He casts a Felawar Stone, and when it resolves, he passes. Tori draws, plays a Lava Glade Pathway, and casts Chrome Ox, imprinting Frantic Search. Then Tori casts Kark, and when it resolves, she passes to Lua. Lua draws a card, plays a Flooded Strand, and casts Phyrexian Walker. She cracks the Flooded Strand going to 39, and grabs a Plateau. She casts Giver of Runes, and when it resolves, she passes. Elliot kicks off turn two by untapping and drawing a card. He casts Wirewood Symbiote. He follows it up with a Finhorn Elves, then plays a Sacred Foundry tapped and passes the turn. Jim untaps, draws a card, and casts Jessica, thrice a born on one. He activates Jessica's minus one ability, targeting Wirewood Symbiote, Finhorn Elves, and Lua's Dome. Elliot responds by activating the Symbiote and returning Finhorn Elves to his hand. Then the Jessica activation resolves and Lua goes to 38. Jim passes the turn. Tori untaps, draws a card, and casts Arid Mesa. She cracks it going to 39 and grabs a Volcanic Island, putting it into play. She casts a Mystical Tutor. This triggers Kark. Tori wins the flip, so she copies Mystical Tutor. She resolves the first one, grabbing Brainstorm and putting it on the top of her library. Then she resolves the second one, grabbing Brainstorm and putting it on the top of her library again. Then she passes the turn. Lua untaps, draws a card, and plays Battlefield Forge. She dashes out Raghavan, taking one from Battlefield Forge. Then she moves to combat, attacking Jim for two. There are no blocks, and Jim exiles a Mana Confluence off the Raghavan trigger. Lua makes a treasure. Lua cracks the treasure to cast Hope of Gearpore in her post-combat main phase. She passes. Elliot starts off turn three by untapping, drawing a card, and playing a Mana Confluence. He casts a Finhorn Elves and passes the turn. Jim untaps, draws a card, and casts a Mystic Remora. Tori casts Fierce Guardianship, triggering Kark. She wins the flip and copies the Fierce Guardianship. Mystic Remora is successfully countered. With nothing else to do, Jim passes the turn. Tori untaps, draws a card, and plays a Misty Rainforest, cracking it and going to 38. Ellie responds by casting Avon Mind Sensor, taking one from the Mana Confluence. Tori searches the library for the top four and fails to find. She casts a Brainstorm, triggering Kark, and wins the flip. She resolves the first brainstorm, drawing three and putting two back. She resolves the second brainstorm, drawing three and puts another two back. She casts a jewel lotus and passes the turn. Lua untaps, draws a card and plays a Sokazan Crucible of Defiance. She casts a Dockside Extortionist. The count is at four. She makes four treasures, then immediately cracks them, casting Winota. It resolves, so she moves to combat. Tori casts Snap, targeting Giver of Runes. This triggers Quark. Tori wins the flip and copies Snap, targeting Winota. In response to the second snap, Lua activates Giver of Runes targeting Winota, giving Winota protection from blue. The copy of snap targeting Winota fails to resolve because it doesn't have a valid target on resolution. The original returns Giver of Runes to Lua's hand and Tori untaps two lands. Lua moves to combat. She swings Hope of Gearport at Tori and Phyrexian Walker at Jim, triggering Winota twice. The first trigger puts a Loyal Apprentice into play, Tapping and attacking Jim. The second puts a Grand Abolisher into play. Tapped and attacking Tori. There's no blocks all around, so Tori takes three going to 35. Jim takes two going to 36. On her second main, Lua activates Hope of Gearpore, sacrificing it and preventing Tori from casting non-creature spells until Lua's next turn. She then recasts Giver of Runes, taking one off of Battlefield Forge, going to 37 and passing the turn. On turn four, Elliot untaps, draws a card, and casts Arena Rector, taking one off the Mana Confluence. It resolves, and he passes the turn. Jim untaps, draws a card, and plays Forbidden Orchard. He casts a counterbalance, giving Tori a spirit off the Forbidden Orchard. It resolves, and Jim passes the turn. Tori untaps, draws a card, and sacrifices Jeweled Lotus. 
she taps an additional one to cast Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. This triggers counterbalance and Jim reveals a bloodstained mire. Sakashima enters as a copy of Kark. When it resolves, Tori passes. Lu untaps, draws a card, and dashes in Raghavan, triggering counterbalance. Jim reveals the same bloodstained mire. Lua moves to combat, triggering Loyal Prentice to make a Thopter. She swings the Thopter at Tori, and Dockside, Phyrexian Walker, Giver of Runes, and Raghavan at Jim. This resolves in five Winota triggers. The first one reveals Angras Marauders, and that's going at Tori. Second one reveals Rionia, and that's going at Tori too. The third one reveals Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, and that one's going at Jim. The fourth one reveals a Mog Hatcher, and that's going at Tori. And the fifth one is a big ol' whiff. This makes 12 total damage at Jim, and he's got no blocks and goes to 24. Hey everybody, Jim here. In the actual game, we resolved this part a little bit out of order, so the visuals may not match up exactly with the audio until the beginning of Elliot's turn. Sorry about that, back to the game. This triggers Raghavan, so Lua makes a treasure and exiles Jim's Bloodstained Mire from the top of his library. There's 20 damage coming at Tori, and she blocks 8 of it from Angras Marauders with her spirit token. She'll also take 12 going to 22. Lua plays an Ancient Tomb and moves to end step. When Raghavan returns to her hand, then passes the turn. Kicking off turn 5, Elliot untaps and draws a card. He plays a Wooded Foothills, cracking it and going to 36. He grabs a Basic Forest. Elliot pays 4 mana and 2 life casting Birthing Pod. This triggers counterbalance, and Jim reveals Lion's Eye Diamond. The Birthing Pod resolves. Elliot pays a green and two life to sacrifice Arena Rector to Birthing Pod, triggering Arena Rector. Elliot searches up Vivian on the hunt off the Arena Rector trigger, and a Kiki Cheeky Mirror Breaker off the Birthing Pod activation. Elliot activates Vivian's plus two ability and sacrifices the Avon Mind Sensor. Tori responds by casting Submerge, targeting Kiki Cheeky Mirror Breaker. Hey folks, Jim again. I just wanted to mention here that the sacrifice part of Vivian's ability doesn't happen until the ability is actually resolving, so by the time you choose something to sacrifice, it's already too late to respond. It doesn't make a difference here, but it's good to know. This triggers both Karks, so Tori flips two coins and ends up copying it twice, targeting Angras Marauders and Mogcatcher. All three copies of Submerge resolve. The Kiki Jiki gets put on top of Elliot's library. Then the Vivian activation resolves and Elliot searches, putting Felidar Guardian into play. It enters the battlefield, triggering its own ability, exiling the Vivian, and puts it back into play. He activates the Vivian again, sacrificing Finhorn Elves. He searches his library and puts Dockside Extortionist into play. The count is at 7, but Lua responds to the enter the battlefield trigger by sacrificing her treasure, dropping the count to 6. The trigger resolves, and Elliot makes 6 treasures. Elliot exiles Simeon Spirit Guide to make a red, and sacrifices 6 treasures along with one mana from his mana confluence, taking one damage in the process. He casts his commander, Rocco, X equals five, to search his library and put the same Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker into play again. With Kiki Jiki and Felidar Guardian in play, he's able to execute a loop by activating Kiki Jiki, targeting Felidar Guardian to make a copy. Then using the ETB trigger to blink the Kiki Jiki and have it come back into play untapped. He makes 453 trillion hasty Felidar Guardians this way. Then he moves to combat and sends 110 trillion at Jim, Tori, and Lua, and leaves the rest up as blockers. And with that, Elliot wins the game. What a game. Well, except for my game. I kept a really greedy one and got hard punished for it. But this weekend was a blast. This is the last game we had filmed with the Scrybabies, and it was so much fun. If you want to catch more of the Scrybabies, just head over to their channel. They've got a couple games going, and they are bangers. And for that matter, if you want to check out all of these games that we played with them this weekend with all of their glorious banter, head over to our Patreon and pledge us $2. That'll also get you access to our awesome Discord where you can chat with our other cool patrons. And us! Speaking of Patreon, I want to give a huge shout out to all of our patron supporters, especially those on the screen right now. The support you give us helps us keep the lights on and keeps us making cool content like this every week. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.